Good morning and a very warm welcome to our St Luke's and Holy Root service this morning. I'm John. And I'm Sarah. Whether you are part of our church's normal times or have stumbled across us on Facebook over the past few months, weeks or even just today, you are very welcome. Yeah, everything you need will be on the screen, but it may also be helpful to have your Bible at hand. The, um, it's lovely to see how you use the comments to welcome and check in with each other at the beginning of the service. There'll be opportunities again later to type in your prayers in the comments. I don't know how you used to prepare to come to church um, in the past, whether there was some, as you walked to church, you would have a little pray as you drove. Um, maybe there was something about getting ready in the morning, preparing yourself. Um, for coming into the building, for being ready. Um, maybe you've chosen this morning not to be wearing your pyjamas as you watch the service. It doesn't matter if you are, it's okay. So we've prepared this morning by dropping Tabitha off at a children's group yeah. with Daisy. <laughs> uh, we've got our refreshments ready for after the service for yes. ourselves. So we've done lots of things to, to make church as normal as we can. Yeah, and to help ourselves prepare for um, what we are coming to do now, which is to worship God together. So as we come to worship and sing in our scattered homes, we might want to change our posture to choose to stand or sit back and remove any distractions. Let's begin this time of worship by saying together the words from Psalm 105, which will appear on the screen now. Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name, Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always.
Lord, let our vision be fixed on you. We are sorry for the times when we have fixed our eyes on other things. When we haven't trusted you to help us, protect us and equip us. We acknowledge our own need to be in control rather than relying on you. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So this week we had uh, Jen Perham and little Josh come and stand at a sociable distance in our garden uh, to be interviewed uh, in what is possibly the least hospitable uh, manner ever known. Yeah, absolutely. In normal times, having someone over who's just had a baby would mean offering them a cup of tea, a comfy chair to feed in, and maybe an offer of a slice of cake. <laughs> But instead of that, Jen and Josh arrived in the rain. They stood by our kitchen window to video this interview. And in normal times, we'd have loved to have met little Josh at church all together. So here he is with Jen's story from lockdown. So Jen, what have the last few months looked like for you? Well, slightly different to normal, but I think that's everybody's <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, lockdown with a newborn. It's interesting. Lockdown pregnant was annoying because I didn't enjoy suddenly being high risk and having to be shut in but then with a newborn it's it's a whole different level of interesting and what you normally do and go and see people to keep sane or people come to you or you can't do any of that even just the midwives appearing in PPE in your house and it's all just been different and the plans we put in place for Hannah to be entertained and happy while we had a newborn at home with with going out to forest school and things that all got cancelled so she couldn't go um so a balancing act mm -hmm. chaos yeah and do you want to introduce your so this is josh josh you need to say hello to saint luke's because they've probably all been desperate to know about you so yes josh who's now seven weeks old i think yep seven weeks old um yes it's fun and games. Oh, and the ha in amongst the busyness of very little ones, how have you seen God at work in this time? Um, God was very much at work during uh, um, the time waiting to go into labour and labour and the birth and all of that because there are restrictions at the hospital with who can be there and who can't be there and how long they can be there and the restrictions were getting tighter the week before I was due. and and i became quite anxious about that of kind of what if aid can't be there that was my one thing i didn't really matter didn't really mind what was going on in the hospital so long as aid could be there with me um and the restrictions were getting tighter and tighter that he could only be there during active labor and birth and any time on a ward no chance so and aid was there the whole time so um after josh was born you're meant to be transferred to a ward to do the checks and things and partners meant to leave there was no space on the ward so we stayed in labor suites and we discharged the three of us together so and came home together and hannah was happy with our friends who she was with and it, it was just kind of god you are amazing and why did we worry yeah yeah oh that is so so good to hear and today we're looking at the story of abraham and sarah is there anything about this, their story that you kind of connect with? It's about trusting God. It's about, it's about learning that we have to rely on him, that his, his word is good, his promises are true. And, and he's, you know, as I was just saying about labour and being worried about it and things, he says, he says, don't worry about it. And he means it and he holds us. And not necessarily in the ways we expect, but in good ways of lockdown we've had We've had aid at home more, which has meant, it's meant challenges, but we'll ignore those. Um, it's meant, um, he's been around more. We've gained seven and a half hours of travel time on a Monday. That means he's home for all of that. That means more time together, balancing children. Um, just how God provides, and it's that. It's seeing God's provision and, and trying to remember that even in the difficult times, in the wilderness, in this lockdown, that there are good things. We have had, I, I don't know, 15, 20 meals delivered, um, and yes, people can't come in and see us, but they've still delivered meals, and you know, it's those provisions, isn't it, that God puts around you, 
and, and in the last week, Forest School has reopened for Hannah, which means that she gets to go to preschool for two days a week, which is fully outdoors. She gets to have fun, she's not bored, she's stimulated, and it's come, it came at the point where, where we were starting to not manage as well. And again, it's God saying, I've got you, just, just go on with it, you've got this. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. And um, if we could be praying for maybe just one thing for you guys, what could it be at the moment? Uh, I think for me it would be patience. <laughs> um, I'm finding the balance of toddler and newborn tricky when Hannah just wants me and we get that I want, I want, I want. And most of the time it's, I want mummy, stop feeding Josh, I want a cuddle. And, and it's just trying to balance mm. balance those things and keep the house quiet enough that aid can be working as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think the patience for us and energy to to make sure that we are loving our children as God loves us and showing them that love that he so amazingly shows us continuously, doesn't he? Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's so lovely to see them both looking so well. And um, Josh is just such a cutie, isn't he? He is, but we're not having any more children. So. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, so we want to pray for the parents, but also the Smith Cocaines and anyone else who's had a baby in the last few months. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for new life and the babies being born at the moment. We pray for Aid and Jen and also for Michelle and Craig and others with new babies. We ask for patience and energy as they juggle other children and without the normal support of groups and friends around them. Would they be aware of you sustaining them and your love for them all as a family? Amen. All right. So Mark Pickin is now going to bring us our Bible reading. Good morning. This morning's reading is from Genesis chapter 12 verse 9 verses and I'm reading from the NIV uh, but using the Hebrew phonetic for the um, character and place names. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Koron. He took his wife, Sorai, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Koron, and they set out for the land of Kenahan, and they arrived there. Abram travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh, at Shechem. At that time the Kenahani were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. Thank you, Mark. Today we begin our series on the patriarchs, the forefathers of our faith, how they coped with and thrived in the wilderness and what we can gather and learn from them today. And of course, we are starting with Abraham, or Abram as he's referred to at this point. 
Abraham meaning father and Abraham meaning father of many. But even Abraham has a backstory. He comes from somewhere. So although we are looking at God calling him today and giving him not one, but six incredible promises, we need to start by looking from where he came. You might want to follow in your Bibles as we do. I will use my handy visual timeline. Um, so here's Abraham. We could look at the passage just before this. Um, in Genesis 11, which it, um, tells us about Abraham's father, Terah. But actually we learn even more if we go back further still to Genesis 4 and the birth of Seth. It's as he's born that we're told that the people began to call on the name of the Lord. A few generations later, and we have Enoch in Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 to 24, who we are told walked faithfully with God. Then his great grandson Noah, yeah, who found favour with the Lord in a world displaying wickedness, chapters 6 to 8. And then from Noah's son Shem, we go through to the generations, um, all through the generations, to Abraham's father, Terah. If you look at chapter 11, verses 27 to 32, we see the context of Abraham's call. We learn first that this line from Seth, a family who walk with God in amongst a troubling time, is about to end at Abraham, as Sarah or Sarai at this point is childless. Those worshipping the one true God, walking with him, are like a tiny flickering candle flame in the darkness and it's about to be snuffed out at Abraham. This is surely the end. The second thing we're told is that they have settled short of where God wants them to be. They were going to Canaan, the promised land, but they settled in Haran. So it's in this moment of being in the wrong place and about to end completely that God speaks and all is changed. The first thing God says to Abraham is go, or in some possibly more accurate translations, get yourself out or get out. God wants Abraham to keep moving, keep pressing on to the promised land. The second thing he says is this wonderful set of promises. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I wonder what Abraham thought when he heard this. I wonder if the scale of the promise was too vast to fully understand. And if instead he simply heard within the promises, you will have a son. Surely that is implied in the fact that from him a great nation is going to be built. And it certainly must have been foremost in his mind. This is a personal promise to Abraham. But this is also a huge corporate promise too. It means there's not an ending on our line here after Abraham, but the promises propel us on through time and generations. Matthew chapter 1 tells us where they lead 14 generations to King David and then 28 generations to Jesus, who is the ultimate promise to us and all people on earth as well, who call, he calls us joint heirs with him, his brothers and his sisters. I love the TV programme, This Is Us, it's utterly perfect. And it follows generations of the same family jumping back and forth through time. The soundtrack is wonderful and it helps you keep track of which era you're in, as do the haircuts and the ages of the family. Um, but in each telling of the same story, there are threads that carry on through the generations, the same themes, themes like family, love, human weakness, so many. As we move from Abraham to Jesus, the invitation is for us all to come 
and join and follow him. And he ties us into this family line of God. And so the line continues with those who choose to tie themselves in too. We carry on to Acts 7 and Stephen's passionate speech before he's stoned to death. He's speaking of Abraham, tying himself into the story of Abraham's call to leave Haran and trust in the promise made by God. We go on still to a letter written by Paul to the Romans, in particular chapter four, tying himself and those receiving his letter into the story of Abraham through to Jesus. And then, writer, and then the writer of Hebrews, also tying himself into this story as he points to the faith of Abraham. If we were able to take communion at the moment, uh, we might be saying the words, this is our story, this is our song. And it is. This line that meets perfection in Jesus is our story and our song. I have a really wonderful family, um, big wider family, lots of people, and I know where I came from, the places, the stories, the people, all my history. John doesn't. He has no idea who his parents were, their story. And then obviously beyond that, who his grandparents were, the places that um, were significant to his history. But this is our story and our song together we share this, whatever family looks like for you, good and bad, we are part of the story of Abraham. So what does this mean for us today? Well, I think it speaks of two things. Firstly, the need to tie ourselves in, root ourselves in this story and see how precious we are to Jesus, that he would call us brothers and sisters and want us to know that this is our story and our song. It's the story of people who didn't settle but pressed on even when it meant time in the wilderness. People who cheered others on in the faith, who faced death but spoke boldly. It's the story of hope when all was about to end and it's ours. How we tie ourselves in might look like being part of a pastoral cell or a small group, connecting with others, making time to read the Bible, familiarising ourselves with this powerful, world-changing story that invites us in. It's praying. It's choosing each day to press on. Eugene Peterson says we are to be pilgrims, not tourists. Tourists just go and look around, observe, visit before going back home again. Pilgrims are on a journey ever upwards, seeking deeper relationship with God. Pilgrims tie themselves into the story of faith. The second thing we can learn, we share in this promise given to Abraham. We are part of all these people stretching through time and around the world today too. Blessed to be a blessing. I'm loving hearing how people are doing that right now in these difficult times within our community. Um, sharing their time, their skills, their finances, all the things God has blessed them with, ready to pass them on as a blessing to others. This is growing to give ourselves away. As we tie ourselves into the story, we grow. We receive God's blessing and an awareness of them and we overflow into the lives of others. We are blessed to be a blessing. The destination isn't receiving the blessing, but passing it on, growing to give ourselves away. As we pause and we sing now, maybe you could imagine yourself tied into this story that links way beyond even Abraham to Seth who turned to God. Imagine tying yourself into this story, not to hunker in and feel safe, but to feel the assurance of our story as we receive God's blessing, ready to be a blessing to others. 
we are the people of God. have led a Friday tea time Zoom for our Elevate Kids group. So last week you can see from this picture that they used cutouts uh, from their hands to think about how they could show compassion. They thought of ways that they could be a blessing to others, passing on all they had received from God. As we come to pray now, let's do the same. If you could use the comments bar to type in who we want to know God's blessing at the moment. As you do, we will start to pray. Lord, we thank you that we, like Elevate, can use our hands to be a compassionate people by phoning someone, writing a card, helping to cook a meal, or just giving someone a wave from a sociable distance. Thank you that by doing this, we may help in showing them their connectedness to your story, Lord. We thank you for Claire and for Matt, blessed by you and choosing to be a blessing to the children of Elevate. Lord, we pray for our um, wider church community at the moment, that as we're all spread out and dispersed, um, that we would be cheering each other on 
um, to be a blessing to others, to dig into the story that you invite us into. And Lord, we pray for our world, um, a world that is in need of compassionate hands, a world that is in need of um, reminding of your blessings. And Lord, we pray and we continue to pray um, as we think of the Black Lives Matters movement. We continue to grieve as you must grieve for the injustice of George Floyd's death. We examine our own hearts and pledge to listen and understand our neighbours of all races and seek to speak out against racism and all forms of in un injustice in our world. Pray for young people, those whose um, education is disrupted, whose futures seem really uncertain at the moment. We pray for universities and those who work in them. We pray for um, those employing young people, for those waiting for exam results. Lord, would they know the call that you have placed on their lives too, as they seek to step out into adult life, as they seek to gather qualifications as they do so, would they know that first and foremost they are loved and that they are yours. Uh, thank you, Lord, um, that um, you are with us as we um, face all sorts of trials, that um, where there's ill health at the moment, Lord, particularly through the, this coronavirus um, pandemic, Lord, would we be caring for those who need help at this time? We pray for our doctors and our nurses, for um, people delivering items, supporting the NHS in many different ways, for those returning to work this week um, or over the past few weeks, those preparing to open shops for schools and teachers and particularly head teachers as they carry such a burden. Pray for those who feel lonely and anxious at this time. Would they know your presence and your peace with them? And Lord, would we just um, be reminded to take each day as a gift from you to not think too far ahead into the future? We pray for those who are bereaved in this time. We might have lost all support around them as well as they face um, real sadness and loss. Thank you, Lord, that you are with them. We thank you for our children um, at St. Luke's, Connect Gamston, Holy Rood, uh, children within our preschool at church as well. Pray for all the families we have connections with through dads and tods, through, um, through tinies and toddlers and oasis. Pray for families who might feel disconnected at the moment, you might find it hard to be a part of online services um, because it's disruptive um, or it's hard for children to, to stay engaged. Lord, would they um, feel your pleasure with them for all they are doing, not for the things they feel they're not doing so well. Equip us and help us, Lord, and help us as well to stretch our gaze further afield into our world where there may not be health systems that are as robust as ours, where there might not be um, joined up support and care for people, where there may already be crises happening, um, famines and, um, and unrest. Lord, would we not keep our eyes totally uh, in our gardens, in our backyard, but would we look way beyond um, to a world um, that you love? Let's gather, uh, let's gather all our prayers together now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father our in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, 
your, your will be done, done on, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have our first Zoom worship night happening this Wednesday night. An email this week will tell you all about that. Next Sunday, there are services at 10 a.m. and a Connect Gamston service at 3 p.m. Uh, but now let's stand or sit where you are and continue to worship together. your glory fall in this room let it go forth from here to the nation let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to seek your face let your glory fall Go forth from here to the nations. Let your fragrance rest in this place as we gather to see your. Let 
details for our Zoom refreshments at 11 a.m. Please do join us. But now let's end with a prayer to send us out as a scattered church. We go into the world blessed to be a blessing. To walk in God's light. To rejoice in God's love. And to reflect God's glory. Let's tie ourselves into his story and live our lives declaring our song. Amen. Amen.